today is the 16th of July, 2018. My name is Rick Dehijo Binya. I'm your host. This is the House of Hidalgo Show. Today is episode four. And uh, man, I'm really excited. And I'm just, not just about the information I'm giving forth, but you see my, my soccer jersey. This is one of the worst teams in the world. Okay? But my dad came from Cuba. My dad's side of the family came from Cuba. And... I'm paying my respect and my homage to uh, uh, the Cuban national soccer team who will never make the World Cup, I don't think. But anyway, that's a whole side note. But uh, uh, today, um, we have a very exciting video. Uh, we're going to get right to it. But first, I want to mention a new patron. Uh, I really want to give thanks to uh, Ian and Jennifer Odell for their support uh as a patron and um i'm just very excited to have you guys on board and in, in, in to have your support of course and you know i got your back too if you ever need anything uh and of course my yellow rose uh thank you also for your support so um with that said we're going to go right into this video uh today i'm going to be on screen we're going to be showing you some things, um, very specific things. We're going to walk you through a uh, whole ideology, uh, and it's going to be very exciting. With that said, let's go to the on screen now, and I'll meet you back here in just a second. <clears throat> okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to bring it up on the screen now. All right, this is what I was referring to when I said I was going to bring you an on-screen presentation. We're going to call this the ways of the world versus the ways of the Lord. As you all know, those are the only ways that exist. Okay, so here goes the presentation. Okay, so the ways of the world and the ways of the Lord have some similarities. Here they are. First of all, all have work to all have work to sustain themselves. They they, they have to work. They they all have to work to sustain themselves. You know the uh, whether you're on the the world side or on the Lord's side, there is work that must be done to sustain yourself. Secondly, the related to the first one, both of them. There's a discharge of energy and reclaiming energy. That's the cycle of life. That happens on the world side. You work your tail off for the world. You get a little bit of compensation. And you can buy, you know, food that energizes you so you can do it again. Cycle of life. On the Lord side, we have to do the same thing. We have to discharge energy doing the Lord's work and then we reclaim that energy you know and it's a continual perpetual cycle third all pay a tax duty tribute or fee to whom it is owed if you're on the world side then you're under the jurisdiction of some kind of a country okay and you're subject to its uh, tax its duty, its tribute, its fee, okay? And if you're on the Lord's side, there's a tax, a duty, a tribute, or a fee. It's owed to the structure. It's owed to the church. And we'll get into that in a little bit here. And then the fourth is uh, all acquire a vessel to determine to whom the taxes, duties, tributes, fees... You know, to, to who it's owed. A vessel is basically your flag that you fly. A vessel is basically the determining factor as to who whom the duty is owed. It's not a question of whether there is a duty. The question is, to whom is it owed? So, let's talk about a vessel. Vessel 
is the engine by which you do work. Without one, you'd be stateless and absent of a birthright. Now, how, how, why would I say that? You'd be stateless without a vessel. Because again, remember, a vessel proclaims the jurisdiction. You can't really define who you are, who you work for, who you're performing an agency for, unless you have a vessel. Where is that vessel, vessel registered? You know, who is it registered to perform for? Okay. And without a vessel, you're absent of birthright because it's the creation of the vessel that determines the birthright. You know, if I, me, my vessel, I was born in California. So my birthright is a Californian. Every vessel is numbered and registered for business in some jurisdiction. Where the vessel is birthed or made only qualifies its birthright. Other factors are important, see the play on words there, in deciding its agency. Every vessel is an agent. And that's true. Every vessel is an agent. The you have to determine <clears throat> the, the determination is is it operating in the ways of the world so then what factor of the world are you performing an agency for or is it operating in the ways of the Lord so then the question is if you're operating in the ways of the Lord then which Lord are you agent for So notice the ship here has the number, right? Very important. We're going to find out that all ships, all vessels have numbers. Of course, there's a big difference between considerations when dealing with a ship and dealing with a body. Okay, so we're going to keep it simple. Don't, and, I, and I want you guys to start thinking of your body as a vessel. Okay? It's a vessel that holds a spirit it holds a soul, right? It's a vessel. And what you direct your body to do is the agency that it performs. So, one, it carries energy to do work. That's what your vessel does. Two, it obtains a number to satisfy jurisdiction. Every vessel has a number. Because that's what satisfies jurisdiction. What vessel number do you have? And how does it relate to the jurisdiction that you're in? Three, it operates an agency every moment of the day. When you're home sleeping at night, you're operating an agency. When you're at work, you're operating an agency. When you're at play, you're operating an agency. When you're sinning, <laughs> you're operating an agency. When you're in obedience to the Lord, you're operating an agency. Every single thing you do operates an agency. So you are a vessel. Now here's some things to consider. I'm going to ask these questions in kind of a, a rhetorical way because I'm going to give an answer as well. Okay, but I want you to think of it from your perspective. So, uh, here's things to consider. Where was the vessel delivered? Okay, so you're the vessel. Where were you delivered? Me, I was delivered in California. So I'm a Californian. What manifest or document announces its existence? Right? So... What, what, what manifest, what paper, what document announced the existence of this particular vessel? Well, that's a birth certificate, right? So, who claimed the vessel as theirs to prepare? Okay, who claimed the vessel? Who said, hey, this is my vessel, right? And, and I would think, I would hope that that's your mother and father. So, where was the vessel registered for business? See, see where 
did the registration take place of the vessel? Again, California for me. That's where the original registration took place. That's where I was given a number to do business. To what laws does the registrant owe duty originally? When you register into a certain jurisdiction, your vessel into a certain jurisdiction, that vessel owes allegiance originally to the to the registrants, uh, to, to where it registers its duty. So my duty originally was to the California Republic, which consequently got absorbed by the State of California Corporation. Does the registrar's law recognize Yah's law as superior? I mean, answer it honestly. If I went to the state of California Corporation and I said, Hey, guys, do you recognize the laws of God as superior to yours? Hmm. They're going to look in their statutes and they're going to say, You know, I don't, I don't see anything here about that at all. So the answer is no, they don't, obviously. They're separate. It's the ways of the world. For whom does the registrant perform as agent? So you or, you know, your vessel was registered to perform as an agent. For who? In my case, it was a state of California corporation who absorbed the state of California. You know, and whether you like it or not, that's not really the question. But that's what happened. So now these questions are concerning work, work that the vessel does. What what's expected of a statutory agent? Okay, your vessel was originally registered as a statutory agent. So what's expected of it? Right, you expected that you're probably going to be you're probably going to owe a duty, a tax of some sort to the registrar. Why must individual vessels obtain to work? So, you know, you were labeled when you were registered. Your vessel was registered originally. You were labeled as an individual vessel. That's called a U.S. person. So what do U.S. persons have to obtain to work? There's a certain number that's uh, denominated like this, three numbers, hyphen, two numbers, hyphen, four numbers. Generally, individual vessels use that number to work and to pay their duty, which is the next one. To whom do individuals, individual vessels owe a duty or tax to? Right? Look at a 1040 and ask yourself the question. Look at the title of the 1040. Individual, U.S. individual tax return. An individual vessel. So if an individual vessel decided to incorporate for a lesser liability, what number facilitates the transaction? So... The reason I ask that question is because a lot of people say, well, you know, I have an LLP that I work through or I have an LLC or I have a corporation that I formed in so-and-so state and that's how I work and I'm protected and I have limited liability. Well, what number facilitated the creation of that LLP or whatever kind of corporation it was? I bet you had to use your individual vessel number to facilitate that transaction. So it is a child of the individual vessel and therefore an interest of the United States that continues to have, that, that promotes the continuance of you needing to have uh, or to pay a duty or a tax or, you know, a fee to to your legitimate jurisdiction because it's the vessel you choose to operate in so 
for whom does a corp perform as agent? Let's say you created a corporation. Who is it, who is it uh, really performing for as agent? It's performing for the United States, which all of its political subdivisions are the states. Think about it. Ultimately, everything that's under an individual vessel is performing an agency for where that vessel's registered. Now let's look at the ways of the world for a second. This is the easiest thing in the world, okay? From the initial registration of birth, the state, operating as a political subdivision of the United States Territorial Corporation, I put that territorial in there to be descriptive because that's what they're using, it's under its Article 4 Clause of Unlimited Territorial Power. Demands, duty, tribute, taxes, and fees all of all its agents. It demands it. Rightfully so. If you had somebody, you know, that, that's volunteered to be um, a vassal of the state, you know, hey, you know what? I want the benefits of working for the state, so I'm going to register myself as a vassal of the state, and I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to work. And then they decide they want to keep all of their labor. <sighs> Throw them in jail, man. That's wrong. You do owe tax if that's the way you want to participate. So this is not unique to this national corporation alone. All natural, all national corporations, all around the world, under the Hague Convention, hold extradition treaties with one another and cooperate to keep their agents under control. In other words, the Hague is a massive convention of corporations who want to control uh, their people and register vessels for taxation and tribute and fees. Okay? That's what it is. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's voluntary. You sign up. Nobody tells you you have to sign up. You just do. You think you have to, right? I mean, who's ever been held at gunpoint and said, you have to fill out this, you know, um, what, are they, what do they call this application for a social security number? If you don't fill it out, I'm going to shoot you. You know? I don't think that happens. People fill it out because they think they have to. They think that they have to participate in a system like that because everybody else does too. It's just been kind of perpetuated over time. So, if you're one who has a passion to operate under the ways of the world, then here's your checklist. Okay? Let's get real now. Register all your property with the United States individual agent number that you were given. Okay? First thing, you better be doing. Because if you're playing around, it's called tax evasion and you're going to jail. That's not my professional opinion as an attorney because I'm not an attorney. So I don't have a professional opinion. But that's a fact. You can look all around the world and see it. Two. Work under the United States individual agent number that you were given. You better be giving out that number every single time that you're ever asked to provide a number to, to prove what jurisdiction you're in. Okay? Every single time. That better be the number you're given. Otherwise, it's tax evasion. You're going to jail. Three, keep all the laws of the state that you live in and do not think of yourself as sovereign. If you're in the ways of the world, you better not ever use that sovereign word. You better not ever say that you own anything. You better not ever say that you are the boss. Because you're not the boss. You're controlled. You know it. You voluntarily uh, put yourself in that situation. Don't ever call yourself a sovereign. Never. Or anything related to a sovereign. Because you better be keeping every law in the state statutorily, even if you're offended by it. Okay? Or even if it differs from uh, natural law. You better keep it. 
Because if you're in the ways of the world, that's the law. Four, do not complain when a law is passed that you think is unconstitutional. <laughs> this one might really sink in hard for you guys. But if you're in the ways of the world, the Constitution was ratified by the people and for their agents to obey. The agents you hire in your elections are rulers with unlimited authority under a territorial clause. Under the United States Corporation system, the Constitution is inapplicable. Don't be whining about what the Constitution says because it doesn't apply to you. You're operating in a territorial system. Okay? So get over it. If that's where you want to be in the ways of the world, you want to operate that way, hey, more power to you. Pay your taxes, your duties, your fees, your tributes. Don't complain about it and benefit from whatever benefits they give you. And lastly, don't complain about forced vaccinations, Obamacare, immigration, pedophilia, uh, LGTB or BT, whatever it is, insanity, etc., the ways of the world perpetuates the whims of Satan. Always have and always will. It is what it is. You can't complain about any of that stuff. Pizza Gate, you know, Adrenochrome, none of that stuff. You can't complain about it. Stop it. Don't ever complain again. If you're going to operate in those ways, you have no right to complain. Okay? The only way you can complain is if you run for office. You go change it yourself. Otherwise, forget it. Because they have unlimited authority, territorial clause. Go read Article 4 of the Constitution. You'll find out for yourself. Sorry about the rant, but it is what it is. The ways of the Lord. This is where I want to talk, okay? I want to talk about this. Not the ways of the world, because those people are nuts. My opinion. I'm sorry if you're one of those ways of the world people. You know, forgive me for saying that. But I do think you're not. The ways of the Lord. Being born again is an opportunity to migrate. And please, memorize that word, migrate. It's going to become very important to you. Write it down, underline it. Okay? Like 20 times. It's an opportunity to migrate from the original hell-bound jurisdiction to a jurisdiction operated by an assembly of agents of the Lord. Indeed, it takes some proper organization that takes time, but the benefits are eternal. Fact. It takes time. Because you got to come into fellowship with other people who are doing the same. And that's where your enforcement is. Step one. You must be born again. <laughs> no kidding, right? Look at John 3, 7 to 15. That's where Nicodemus famously says, you know, well, how can that be? Well, well, you know, so you can go look at that for yourself. Being born again prepares our vessel to migrate from the original jurisdiction to another. So even though I was once Californian under my original vessel capacity, under that original name, okay, that sucker's parked. I don't use him anymore. Ways of the Lord, step two. By the way, I'm using cartoons here because guess what? They're not copyrighted. I can use these things and they're coloring pages, so forgive me if it seems kind of cheapish, <laughs> but I didn't want to get any copyright claims. So Acts. 2, 36-39, go read it for yourself. Baptism is the christening of the vessel which ordains and seals the vessel for the work. For the work of the Lord. Remember, there is work to do no matter what path you choose. There is work to do. And that's going to get exciting too because the normal separators under the public church the fake church, the 501c3 church, the normal separators of things you can't do as a church, don't apply on this side. They don't. I'll show you. But the ways of the Lord, step three. Authenticate the old vessel. 
your vessels a birthright, doing business in a nation, even corporately hijacked ones like this one in all the Hague nations, necessitates a birthright. If you are ever confused as a foreigner because of your different walk, because you're walking in the ways of the Lord, you will need to have it in place. Go look at what happened to Paul. Acts 22, 25-28. Go read it for yourself. There's a reason why you need to authenticate. You can authenticate the fact that you have an American birthright, and you're going to authenticate the fact that birthright is parked, or that entity is parked, not the birthright. Birthright sustains. For instruction in doing this process, listen to the House of Hidalgo show uh, that I just did last week, episode 3. Okay, go listen to that. I give you specific instructions of how to authenticate. If you haven't done it yet, please do. Step 4. Equipping the agent of Hamashiach to do the work of the Lord every day of their life. You see this guy, see what he's doing? He's scrubbing a deck. Back in the old world church days, you know, public church days, you can't scrub a deck for pay and be expected not to have to pay a duty. What kind of nonsense is that? Actually, it's not nonsense at all. If you're operating in a true church, if you're operating in a true fellowship, a true assembly, no matter what you do is on to the Lord. It's all about the vessel. It's all about the capacity. So you want to learn about, uh, you know, the work that you do and how it applies? Go look at 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Go look at Hebrews 13, 20 to 21 and Ephesians 4, 17 to 16. Let's break down step four now. Vessel is created by a creator to whom the vessel is agent. What's the creator's name? Second Corinthians 5.20 gives you a clue. Okay, so there's a new vessel. It's been created by another creator. Right? And to whom the vessel is agent. A vessel declares its intentions. That's the second thing. Joshua 24, 24, uh, 15. A vessel declares its intentions. As for me and my house, right? We will serve blank. Declare your intentions. Three. A vessel of the Creator needs a name. Right? What's the name? What's the vessel's name? Second Corinthians five seventeen. Okay. You are a new creation creature. Depending on which version you're reading. The old is what's that G word again? Oh gone. In other words, it's parked out there somewhere and it's no longer existent. I'm not using it anymore. And the new has what's that C word again? Oh come. Yes, the new has come. So, in other words, I'm operating now in a new vessel that needs a name. It's not the same name. It can't be the same name because that name's corrupted and, you know, it's it's done things improperly and it's, you know, been driving that white pinto around town picking through the trash, like I said in the third video. So you need a new name. Four, a vessel of the Creator needs a number, which, which when seen is understood as peculiar or foreign to the ways of the world. There actually is a number, which I will show you in a future show. There actually is a number that you will get as a peculiar people that's foreign to the ways of the world. And... It's acknowledged and understood as being foreign. Foreign to the interest of um, domestic governments. Five. Vessels 
need to be in fellowship with others whom serve the same creator. Hebrews 10.25, go read that. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Vessels need to be in fellowship with others who serve the same creator. So if they're in fellowship together, what do you call that? A household of faith is a house. What is the house's name? Shouldn't the house have a name? What do you call it? Oh, it's our gathering. Well, that doesn't really separate you very much from, say, a gathering of satanic pedophilia um, nuts or anybody else. You can't just call it a gathering. We've got to give it a name. What's the house's name? Six. A house needs a number, so each of the vessels under its care can be protected and recognized by family. What is the legal name for the organization called? So you have to organize. You organize your house, right? Put your house in order, give it a name, and then what's it legally called? for the sake and purpose of the organization. A house is a body of vessels owning a duty, oh excuse me, owing a duty, not owning, God owns it. A house is a body of vessels owing a duty to the same principle. A body of vessels is a church. You see how that goes? It's a church. Your house, mother, father, Son, son, daughter, daughter. That's a house. That's a church. It's a body, a vessel for Christ. Eight, a house or church that come into agreement <coughs> with one another. With other houses. is called a convention. What's your convention called? These are clues. I'm trying to help you here. Nine, the several conventions of the families of Yahuwah all around the world is called the kingdom of heaven. Who is king of this kingdom? What are his ways? Ephesians 4, 16, 4, 11 through 16. Go look it up. I'm telling you. This is all kind of common sense stuff, but man, it's been hard to put together because we have been absolutely just torn asunder. Families have been the focus of Satan's, you know, fury on this planet, in this world. So, the ways of the Lord, step five, record keeping. You like my Superman here? It's because of this right here, see? Record keeping is... Well, for the perpetuity of the house and family of Yahuwah is super important. Yeah, so that's why Superman is there. But anyway, uh, it's super important. Records which should be kept by the Ecclesia. Authentications for all the members of your house. For all the members of your conventions. Right? Authentications. Please, that, make sure. Two, baptisms for all the members of your house, all the members of your convention, right? Baptisms. Marriage. Ooh. You mean we shouldn't involve the state in our marriages? Oh my goodness. Never thought of that one before. Is that not a function of two people coming together as one under Christ? Well, I think so. That is called a church. Here, educational. We should be teaching our own kids the ways of the Lord. You can't do that if you're registered in the system. We, have, we must find our way on that. Five, wills. Yeah, what's the will of the church? What's the will of the body? What's the will of the vessels? Hopefully it's to do the ministry. You get it? Get my hint there? Okay. Six, trust. All right, trust. Well, these are, remember, if you are one of my patrons, my patrons, and you've seen the 
insider video that I put up on Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash House of Hidalgo Show. You will know that the insider video that I put up, you'll understand why I put trust here. Number seven. Any other record normally kept by a fiduciary custodian? <laughs> you got to think about that one for a second. That's a lot of stuff. Uh, that a lot. That's a lot if you think about it. Think about it for a second. Who employs you in your ecclesiastical capacity? Who employs you? Who's your boss in your ecclesiastical capacity? Um, who does the ecclesiastical agent owe a tribute to? Hmm. I would say the body. Wait, but that's the church. So who's the church again? Oh, you can figure that out. Is it blowing your mind yet? Did the 501c3 public churches confuse the matter? Etc. Yeah, I think so. They did. But uh, that concludes today's, uh, today's show. Just want to remind everybody, if you want uh, more information, you want to see how we self-govern our house, some examples, so on and so forth, go to therockofsalem.org. If you want to uh, get on the Insider and get some intel into your house of more specific items, uh, you can join me on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash House of Hidalgo Show. Become a patron at any level, and you'll be able to see the things that we're doing. But remember, uh, I'm going to eventually be exposing it in such a way that I hope you can read between the lines. But if you're one who needs a little extra help, there is always that other channel. Um, I just don't want anyone to feel like they have to be a supporter. Definitely, you don't have to be a supporter. Um, but I do appreciate it. At the end of the day, I want all of us to succeed, so let's get going. With that, thank you again for listening to another installation and episode of the House of Hidalgo Show. God bless. It's See you what next you time. Made me see. Think of what you